pushing the boundaries of expectations and rewriting the rules of adventure are the reasons we get up in the morning. This is a way of life, a huge and growing community of explorers and adventurers, leading the way, blazing new trails, and raising the bar. We share your hunger for a life without limits, and we know you'll stop at nothing to get there. So there is a place closer than you may think, and it's a dwelling place where all is well. It's a place where you can go at any time that you should choose, free from the chaos and noise of the world. It's a place where all good things are in abundance. It's the center of stillness for living your best life. Greetings and welcome back, KB Creatives. I'm Stephen Canyon. Glad you could join us for a, another adventure of experiencing our best lives. Email address is kineticbelief at stephencanyon.com and the website is stephencanyon.com. Miss Maggie, greetings. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good day to you, my friend. <laughs> it's so good to be here. You are wearing today quite nicely. Oh, thank you. You look really good in, in today. In all black. In just today. Well, the sunshine <laughs> and the blue sky looks really good on you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're just wearing well, it. I like that. Oh, by the way, I like the handbags that you just created. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. Oh, well, thanks. Where did you get the idea? Um, from a YouTube video about Paris. <laughs> a, a YouTube video about Paris, about a Parisian fashion. Well, they they are so cool, and Thanks. I you know, Thank what you. I what she was doing is she's sitting at the dining room table, and she's got out these little markers, and she's doing yeah. artwork on these little what kind of bags they're are they're canvas, so they're just oh. canvas uh, tote bags, and you, I got them at Michaels, and I got some fab black fabric pens, and just started doing little line drawings and sketches, and it's really fun. But it looks like, um, oh, who's the artist? Picasso. You did Picasso. Yeah, so I, I did, I copied a few of his line drawings, etchings onto two of them, and then the other one I just freehand sketched a figure. Well, we went out to a restaurant and you were carrying one of them, and I couldn't help, but there was a couple of, of women standing in line and they were about to bend over backwards trying to <laughs> oh, see what, what it is you're carrying. <laughs> well, it's always fun to have something that people can't quite figure out where you got it, so if you make it. They never know. It's on the <laughs> other end of the the uh, spectrum from designer bags, I got to say. <laughs> yes, that was so kind of the point. Cool. That was kind of the point. Well, you're wearing today nicely. Oh, thank you, Steve. <laughs> today, so we're, we're going to be talking about the center of stillness, and it is so, by the way, so good to be back. We yes. had just a little bit of a liaison yeah. away from uh, <laughs> yeah. this, uh, from our podcast. We yeah. had some things to run around, errands to, to take care of yeah. in preparation of some big stuff coming up mm -hmm. so i'm so excited to be back here oh, me today too. i miss it anytime we're not here with everyone i just oh i feel like something's missing from the day well it's our family exactly right exactly yeah well let's let's dive right in here i'm, I'm going to talk about the center of stillness the center of stillness mm -hmm. is more than just a state of mind the center of presence in other words is not it's not just a deep breath while relaxing our thoughts. No, the center of stillness has a very real location. It's a place. And it's a place where anyone can go to at any time that should, they should choose to go there. And so it's kind of like uh, Dorothy, isn't it? You know, <laughs> clicking her heels together. Anytime she could have gone there anytime <laughs> she wanted to, she just didn't know. Like and the center of stillness is exactly the same way. It's always accessible, but we just need to know how to go there. Hmm. This, this very special place is centered between the anticipatory meandering of thoughts and the reflective imagery of memory. The subconscious, it continually streams the thought forms of ideas from these two regions of consciousness. And it's the toothless threat of destruction, failure, pessimism, worry, doubt, fear, all those things that will, it's just, con they're continuously lying in wait, um, seeking someone to devour, right. <laughs> to, to pounce on for the purpose of destruction. And so it's the center of stillness that refers to the tense of our consciousness mm -hmm. and making the cognitive choice to invite a quiet calm into our entire sense of being. Now think about it this way. Our inner speech 
is rated at an average pace of about 4,000 words per minute. And I know some people, it's probably a lot more than that. <laughs> They're usually the ones with the wide eyes. Yes. <laughs> and they got a lot going on on the inside. But using the auditory sense of perception, we can listen to and comprehend up to 400 words per minute. An auctioneer will talk at an average of about 450 words per minute. Mm. <laughs> so, um, and that's a large amount of discretionary verbiage, and that's a lot of chatter. It, and in fact, it's so large that without knowing how to locate our center of presence, without knowing how to click our heels, <laughs> we, we go into this autopilot of confusion. Have you ever driven somewhere and not remembered the drive there? Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, you were just yes. on the, the um, autopilot of confusion yes. while your mind is being exhausted with all of these endless yeah. possibilities. And, and, you know, you've had, you're having all these conversations with someone that you're, 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 <laughs> you're doing their part of the conversation and then you're responding. And then you're, they're saying that and you're saying this and it's back and forth and back and <laughs> forth. And you're having this argument with somebody that when you get down to the office, they, you walk in loaded for bear and they don't have a it clue. Never happens. To, it, it never this happens. These conversations never actually <laughs> come to fruition. Right. So it's the, it's the autopilot of confusion. Mm. And so while your mind is being exhausted with all of these endless possibilities, your hands and feet while uh, on the way down there are perfectly content just to keep on driving while you're actually being driven crazy. And so this is the thing that leads us there is that internal dialogue that's just on autopilot of confusion. Wow. You know, I, I really have done that so many times. I mean, you'll just drive somewhere like to our studio, you know, going there so many times, which we would just go there. And then I realize that I can't remember the drive there. Um, so I guess you're saying that it's, mm, it's the absence of being present, um, kind of like daydreaming that puts us into this sort of autopilot. Yeah, yeah it's, it's the centering of stillness that begins with expanding ourselves, where we are in our present state of being. Mm -hmm. Look, we are spiritual beings having this natural experience. We are occupying this physical body while we're here, right. this earth suit. And so peace is not just an attitude. Peace is a substance. Peace Occupy space and is actually quantum. It's a quantum substance. There's a substance that it represents peace. Peace is an energetic, and that's why it feels so good mm. to be at peace. Right. You can feel it. To move into your center of presence, your place of peace, um, to, in order to do this on demand, to click your heels, begin by noticing your life presence inside of this earth suit. The presence of life in here. Pay attention to your life source. For example, notice your hands. And if you close your eyes without moving your fingers, and if you meditate on it, you can experience the life in your hands. Mm. And do say the same thing with your feet. You can notice and feel the life in your feet without moving your feet. And that's a great way to start by recognizing and noticing your life presence, paying attention to your, your toes and your fingers and your face, and your, your body in general. Look, the abundance of present peace, which begins with present awareness, it doesn't mean that we can't move, for example, into a conversation after we center ourselves, that we're going through our day and we need to have a meeting. We're meeting with someone or we're getting on the phone to have a conversation. It doesn't mean that being in present awareness, occupying this space, this place, that we can't continue through our day and have conversations mm -hmm. and interact right. and function in these tasks that we've laid out before ourselves, we can still go about our day. What it means, however, is that we are no longer available for the egocentric thoughts that compete for the attention of awareness. Mind-filled meanderings will lure us away from our center of present peace. The power of kinetic belief works within the center of present peace. This is where that active kinetic energy moves us in the destination of our best life. And it's this, this is the communal place of non-competition. And so what's happening is we're intentionally removing our thoughts from... Uh, the need to do list that we run out the door yeah. carrying in the morning and we remove our thoughts from the 
the regrets. If, if only I'd done this, or if only I had said that instead of this <laughs> other thing. If, if I'd just given them a piece of my mind on the way out the door, <laughs> whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> if I just, you know, if I just refused to give up my place in line, whatever all that stuff is, yeah. noise. Intentionally removing our thoughts from those need to do lists, from all those regretful lists, all that stuff. And uh, that's the beginning of moving mm. into present peace. I really like that. Intentionally removing our thoughts from the anxiety of the what we need to do. Mm. Uh, so, so how exactly, I want to understand better, how can we do that You know, on demand? You use that word all the time, which I love. Um, how do we stop our minds from racing along? Well, by being quiet within. And we do this... We do this by casting down every imagination and highest viewpoint that contradicts our present moment. Mm. And we do this intentionally, willfully. If it's a contradiction to the present moment of being, cast it down for the moment. By welcoming our center of self-awareness, pure presence moves consciousness into the quiet calm where we can observe clearly with clarity. It's from this vantage point, in other words, that the energetics of desire remain absolutely pure and unchanged, unadulterated. And it's from this vantage point that any human being, any creative creator, begins to attract their abundant life. And it's from this center of present peace, Meg, that the conscious mind then rises above every sense perception. It's from here perspective changes and it's from above the noise of the world that the wisdom of conflict resolution releases the soul from every anxiety Mm. meditating to learn centering a present peace it is a beautiful thing worthy of practice worthy of mastering because we carry with ourselves this place of being within it's everywhere we go it's not at the spa It's not on vacation. It's with us at all times. And so we don't have to go into the woods to access our presence. It's a great place to do it, but we don't have to go there. Through through the dog-eared conscious center of present peace, it may be while getting the kids ready for school. It could be commuting across town in five o'clock traffic, late for a meeting, whatever your day may hold, you can assert your awareness away from the confusion, away from the frantic pace, the end of a task, the perception of winning or losing, whatever it may be, the fear of loss, the anxiety of worry, doubt, or fear. We enter into a place of rest where we no longer are interested in thoughts of the subjective noise. Because these negative source influencers are the cause of all anxiety, every dissatisfaction, and every stressor. So it's this ability to go back to our original genius of purpose that then lies at all times within the center of present peace. Negative source energetics are attracted to form, not from within, but from without. They are formed from without our center of present peace. They're, they are formed out there in the energetics of all of these uh, optional, chaotic moments of consideration. Mm. Every single person's genius of purpose is located within the center of present peace and is the authentic self. That authentic self, that's... I mean, that has always been sort of the it factor, right? I mean, it's right. it's that ability to uh, med- uh, meditate through the frantic paces of life uh, to remain centered that allows us to remain authentic. I love that word. And it's that authenticity, our, our self-assuredness, if you will, that, that keeps us from being stressed out. Keeps us from going to that <laughs> place. Absolutely. Look, we become agitated when we're consumed by the rapid fire negative thoughts. Those 4,000 words per minute that are just bang, 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 bang. fire, fire, fire. Mm. And it's confusion. It's the awareness. Look, it's the awareness of created self that is not, it does not need to prove itself to conform or to be validated by someone else. No, Mm. the core center of the authentic approves of itself. It loves itself. It's happy with self. It's joyous with self. Its presence is now. It just is. And so it's content, and it's from this center of present peace. The unconditional love for God, 
for other right. co-creatives and for ourselves that the peace of intuition assures us that nothing can actually distress us while in this place. We let it go by. We're there to, you can see it going by. We don't participate in it. We're above it. We're not in it. We're not beneath it. We're above it. Just simply spectating, watching it and accepting it for what it is as it races by. I have to say, as you're describing this, it is really becoming so clear how powerful being able to step into this headspace, to step into this very real place, like you already said, rise above these things. Um, having that in your pocket at all times in life, it's going to be revolutionary sure. to well, our experience. That's cor- you know the noise of the imagination is inherently empty. It's just mm, noise. Yes. It's just a lot of stressful noise, and it's it's only the mind's attention to those negative judgments that creates something out of nothing. Yeah. To align with our genius of purpose, however, the center of present peace, we simply become still by consciously quieting our present awareness. And by doing this, like you were saying a minute ago, talking about daydreaming, we awaken from the daydream of the mind, which is different than the constructs from the highest viewpoint of our desires. Mm -hmm. We are, after all, the deciding witness as to the kind of life that we're going to experience. A life that is lived in the chase of the tomorrows, Mm -hmm. pursuing it, racing after those things, misses the experience of life today. Right. Likewise, a life that's lived in the memories of the past misses the experiential joy of those advancing moments. We um, sold a a bicycle of yours this morning. We're getting ready to do some traveling, and so we're getting rid of our bicycles. We just can't take them with us everywhere. And there's so many wonderful memories of seeing you on your pretty little (laughs) yellow bicycle scooting around uh, uh, Yellowstone and in Charleston, South Carolina, and all these different places. And But holding on to those past moments would, and those memories of the past would absolutely cause us by living in those experiential moments of the past to miss those joyous advancing moments that we're now anticipating for Mm. tomorrow. Yes, yes. The, The paradoxical truth is this. Even though the center of our present peace is in the present tense of the now, it is the entrance of now that aligns us with the unbound space of the infinite, the creative consciousness. Mm. And it's from this vantage point that the joy of peace, gratitude, and a sense of well-being attracts whatever it is that we desire to form. It's from this vantage point that a false sense of security that the conformity of the collective projects onto the world and that it's seen for what it is. In other words, you got to hold on to that, those things of the past in order to be able to enjoy the future. Mm-hmm. Um, in other words, the enlightenment of wisdom becomes us from this vantage point that is centered in the now. That's the power of kinetic belief, though, isn't it? All of the attributes of the abundant life, they, they transform us to become us. And so, so I guess you're saying that all these things enter into the presence of our now when we're at peace. But yes, by trusting the inner light for the wisdom of peace, we move into the quiet of the now. Observing our mind's presence by looking, um, by looking at ourselves in the eye of awareness, for example, the pure essence of our life source as it is. From, it's from here in the present moment as we move through our day, that whatever whatever uh, we do with the senses, in other words, with our feelers and our choosers, that's not really us. It's like going through a dark room with all the lights off and you can't see anything and you're feeling your way along. Mm-hmm. And the obstacles are there for you to, to decipher and to imagine and to believe and to choose your, as you feel your way through. Mm-hmm. But the sensory perception does not, is not a reflection of you. It's simply the surrounding environment. Right. Wow. And so it's the inner center of present peace that we want to turn our feelers toward that become evident of the inner presence of all that there is and all that there is in 
every essence of who we are. And that is where we find in that center of present being. That's where we locate our abundance and our perfect health and happiness and joy and peaceful presence. It's all centered in that moment of now. When interrupted by the energetics of demands, Whenever that shows up and there's a loud knock on the door of your inner peace, stop and just look within again and just take a deep breath. Focus on your life source. Locate it by becoming aware of the now as it is from within. And then just be still and wait because you'll catch up with it. Look, there is never any need to hurry or worry. We don't ever need to respond to the demand of fear. We, we don't always need to answer. We don't always need to know the answer. Boy, that somebody just got free right there. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> it was that, yeah, I, I felt it. No, yes. the, the answer mm. just is. And it's not the answer uh, simply because you know it, by the way. Let the information, wherever it is, validate itself. Peace is always now, and the substance of peace is being present, absent any other thing. When, when we race through our life looking ahead for the next turn, we will always lose sight of ourself. Yes. We are uh, alienated from the reality of our presence by racing ahead, and we, when we dwell in reasonings, we're alienated. When, when we create imaginations of what things will be like if we're not successful, we're alienated from ourselves. And it's these thoughts that attract the life that we're experiencing now, the anxiety that we're experiencing, the unrest, the fear, the doubt and worry and depression and all of those things. No, the anxieties of the world anxiously plow ahead with the energetics of storms, you could say. And there's nothing more exhausting than going against the wind of a storm. It's defeating, it's deafening, and it's certainly disappointing. And my goodness, it's maddening. So we ask ourselves, ask yourself, what, what if I were to stop? I mean, what if I stopped dwelling on all of those what-ifs, stopped analyzing conversations, stopped racing through each day in a rut race, (laughs) stopped strategizing through endless stories that are looping around in my thoughts? Isn't that it? Just ask ourselves, what if I could just stop racing around in a rut all the time, stop my thoughts from being so darn busy? Just stop. Just stop. I love we, that. What if, what if you just stopped? Well, <laughs> what would happen? You know, and, and here's <laughs> yes. the answer to that question. We can. Mm, and for yeah. those that put a demand on their peace, here are a few things that you can discover by doing that. Clarity of what makes you wonderfully unique. Mm-hmm. And you'll discover meaningless activities that distract you from your purpose. And it's from this higher perspective, this higher viewpoint, that you're going to be, be able to embrace through the, the cognitive uh, understanding of your circumstances what needs to be changed. And it's the desire to take care of your physical presence that all of a sudden you're going to come in contact with and, and recognize. And by putting a demand on your peace, you all of a sudden understand how to kinetically believe in order to expand your life. Hmm. By putting a demand on your peace, a desire to advance your mind, body, and soul is just going to become you. It'll overtake you. It'll run you down, grab hold of your ankles, and drop you to the ground if it needs to. (laughs) Just to to remind you to advance your mind, body, and soul. If you put a demand on your peace, then all of a sudden new and fresh delight in the observation of life around you begins to become you. Light and love and peace and enjoyment and all of those things begin to overtake you. So the perspective for discovering our peace, it just, it leads to all of these things. Yes, it does. And so much more. In fact, the center of stillness heals the soul. Mm. Yes. It manifests enlightenment and it calms our existence. And the center of, In the center of stillness, we don't need to be anxious. We accept others for who and where they are. We don't control. In other words, we keep our dominion in check. We don't seek to impress others. There's no need to. And we just breathe and we relax. And we understand that, you know what? Life expands freely and perfectly as it should throughout the entirety of the universe, with or without our involvement, it does what it's supposed to do. And so we relax and trust. 
The conscious centering of present peace. That's what returns our attention to the now. And we immediately move from the fast pace of future antics and Mm. and past thoughts of regrets and ideas to the wonderment of now. It's the wonderment of now, the treasure of now, the fullness of now. Now is all there is. And so we embrace that. Look, you are beautifully, perfectly created to be as you are, who you are in your awareness of you. And as you stop the strategizing of things that you were never meant to control by resting your creative dominion at the doorstep of your creative studio, you're going to advance your mind into the center of your present peace. Now, you may be thinking, well, now, Steve, I just have too much to do. I've got too many responsibilities. I've got my honey-do list which I wrote. I've got my simply stop <laughs> thinking right. about it all. Uh, all of the, I just can't stop. I can't quit doing what I have to do. Mm. Look, it's not only possible to move through a storm of ideas and possibilities and those lists and, and all of those alternate expectations and desires and to be unmoved by them, but it's how we were actually created to perform uh, within ourselves. It is the broken approach that shakes a tree to gather fruit. When it's time, the fruit will just bear itself to the gatherer. Begin now. Begin today. Look, draw your attention away from anything that cannot be seen, touched, or heard. Look around right there where you are right now. Be quiet and just look around the room that you're occupying. Now, close your eyes and feel the sensations of your body. Notice each tension and every point of pressure. Create a comfortable space for your feelings of relief. Now breathe. Breathe deeply. Let it out. And now just slip away from the details of what you see. Move into that inner presence. Move into the colors of your environment and sense the expression of those colors that exist right now in this space you're occupying. Notice the patterns of light. And that's awareness. Fill your space with the quiet of just what is. Maybe there's a distracting sound that permeates the quietness. Accept it for what it is. And don't push back. Allow it to be what it is. All is well and as it should be. So accept that. Look, allow timelines to dissolve. Let them fall away. There's no linear time pursuit in your day if you choose there not to be. For this moment of centering yourself, allow that to dissolve. The mindful management of restrictions can fall away. They're not yours to carry the load of. I mean, they still exist, but you're not the bearer of those things. Now, the presence of peace is expanding around you as you enter into it to expand with it. And now you're finding yourself centered in that place as a creative creator where the fullness of the power of kinetic belief will operate to attract whatever life you should choose. But it's from this place of being centered and not moved by the semantics of the noise of the world. Now, it may seem like present peace doesn't last Maybe those walls of, of the present now begin to restrict you and come tumbling back down. Emotions and feelings, look, they don't last. They come and they go. And that's why we should never, ever allow ourselves to be controlled by our emotions. All positive experiences are attracted from our center of present peace. Your best life is attracted from your center of present peace. Finances, abundance, prosperity, perfected health and joy and happiness, good friends and laughter and love, all of these things, the light of joy, are attracted from the center of present peace. And it's from the energetics of now, where the gratitude for nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing wrong, manifests our best lives. The awareness of how something perhaps could be better from the center of present peace will not produce unpleasant feelings. It will not bring in those those attitudes of regrets or doubt or worry or fear. It's just simply the holistic understanding that 
we're always growing and developing toward the more. And so by looking within for the full extent of what is, we awaken the reality of our original self as God intended for it to be. From this present place of peace from the now, rather than responding in the habitual way of being, the knee-jerk way of responding, we let go of control and begin to emerge from the stillness of self. Mm, Wow. I love how what you teach isn't the idea of work harder, try harder, go faster, go, 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 stay stay up later, get up earlier. (laughs) I got too many knots on my head to teach that to anybody else. Been there, done that. No, 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 look. Isn't that it? I mean, (laughs) so many of us live like there's a drill sergeant just yelling at us at all times. Oh, absolutely. No, life unfolds by default. Mm. We either develop to become more or we diminish to become less without effort. Without thought, life unfolds by default. However, it's the power of kinetic belief from the very center of present peace that's resurrecting to our original way of being. We emerge each day and throughout each day, all day, into the and into the night and beyond from the stillness of our center of being. Our original source is within, and that's where the joy of light begins, and it's from our present peace that life source is us. Just as the God particle permeates all things to become more of what is, the power of you permeates the presence of your now to become more of you. The noise of confusion that's around us and surrounds us as we move throughout our day in all of its many forms is just as real as any, anyone should believe it to be. And not for those who don't. It takes hostages where it may take them and it releases them where it must. The freedom from all such things arises from the center of our present peace. There's a vacuum of stillness that's there from the most uh, intimate of spaces and it forges our life. Even where it appears, life cannot exist. All things in this universe work together for our good, for good is at the center of all things. Even even where there has been some kind of an emotional trauma or pain, the outsourced evidence cannot remain in the space between our thoughts. It's in that space between our thoughts. It's from the center of stillness that peace surpasses understanding. It's from the center of stillness where all things are well and everything must pass to become even more. This is the light of the peace of God. And the world as it is, it is irrational. The world as it is, it is irate. It's anxious. It's angry. It's everything that you're not. It's it's hunger, in fact. It cannot be satisfied. And it's thirst, I am telling you, it cannot be quenched. The anxiety of starvation is suppressive, and it will devour whomever it may devour in the attempt to end the pains of hunger. That's what it does. Whether we like it or not, that is the nature of hunger. And so it's possible to enjoy the things of this world without being terrified by the uh, bellows of fear. Now, from the center of present peace, we can delight in the dance of creation while detached from the demands of reasonings. You know, it's the make me happy, take care of me, tell me what to do that the world cannot supply for us. Right. It's when we get to the end of, of hoping for those things that our suffering comes to an end. The space between those thoughts has all of the provision for your vision. It's the center of present peace that all things are possible for those that love from there. Look at any time during any moment. Here's the deal. Losing yourself to the space within, that is the very thing that disassociates us from the contact of what could have or should have been. It's the inner sanctum of the calm of you that manifests more than any forward or past thought could have ever imagined. And it's from there at any time that you should enter or choose to enter that it is so good that it has to be true. 
Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu said, silence is a source of great strength. And, you know, silence yes. is a source from, uh, from within for greatness. Yes, absolutely. And it's where the abundance of every possibility exists, Meg. I mean, if when we go there and whisper into the ear of our innermost thoughts, that's where our best life lies in wait mm. to manifest and express itself. Mm, yes. Wow. Well, let's work on some center of stillness uh, yes. affirmations <laughs> should we bring this to the forefront. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do it. Just say this out loud. Say, I am a vessel of peace. I am a vessel of peace. I am a vessel of well-being. I am a vessel of well-being. And my place of peace is now. My place of peace is now. I unconditionally accept, I, love, and admire myself. I unconditionally love, accept, and admire myself. And who I was created to be. And who I was created to be. I am grateful for the abundance. Abundance of stillness. I'm grateful for the abundance of stillness that is constantly flowing into my life. That is constantly flowing into my life. I feel with every breath I take. I feel with every breath I take a sense of peace. A sense of peace. Love and stillness. Love and stillness. I choose to help others live in a state of calm and acceptance. I choose to help others live in a state of calm and acceptance. As I radiate approval and love to them. As I radiate approval and love to them. I exist in a vacuum of calm. I exist in a vacuum of calm. In a big world of uncertainty. <laughs> in a big world of uncertainty. And at this very moment. At this moment. Right here and right now. Right here, right now. All is well. All is well. All is well. All is well. I am free. I am free. From my past. From my past. And dwell in peace and stillness. I dwell in peace and stillness. I admire and appreciate all of the beauty that surrounds me. I admire and appreciate all of the beauty that surrounds me. I embrace the stillness of thought. I embrace the stillness of thought. And the acceptance of now. And the acceptance of now. Why, peace has become me. <laughs> peace has become me. Look at me. Look at me. I'm peaceful. <laughs> I'm peaceful. Because I'm peace. Because I am peace. And the silence, and the silence is soothing to my inner being. Is soothing to my inner being. Wow. Thank you for such a centering, peaceful podcast today, Stephen. Just, I feel like I'm light years beyond where I was just even 30 minutes ago. Thank you so much. And if you want to take a look at the, the journal, the guided journal that Stephen has created to center yourself in peace at all times, you can do that at stephencanyon.com. And wow, Steve, this was just wonderful. Sending out much love, light, hope, and joy to all UKB creatives all over the world. Yeah, love to all of you. And thanks as usual, Steve, for all the wisdom.